Borussia Dortmund have been knocked out of the Champions League in the group stages itself. How insane is that? They're heading straight into the Europa League for a club with the likes of Jude Bellingham, Royce and literally one of the best strikers in the world in Erling Haaland. For this to happen is genuinely embarrassing. And I guess that's why we're here to fix the situation with Borussia Dortmund, but... First of all, to kind of follow Dortmund's mantra in making signings, we're not going to be allowed to sign players above the overall of 85. So basically, we can sign players 84 rated and below. That's the limit. And also, we have to sell Erling Haaland. This is, I think, common knowledge that next season Haaland won't be a Dortmund. So we're going to try and fix Dortmund without Erling Haaland. So this is going to be a really challenging fixing video. Challenge accepted. I'm actually super excited about this. Without Haaland, a Dortmund fixing challenge is going to be ridiculously difficult. And we're going to get a lot of money. So working that into the team is still going to be a ton of fun. Especially with the transfer rule we've got. So I think this is going to be a really fun fixing challenge. And let's make Dortmund a Champions League winning team. If you guys are enjoying fixing Fridays, this damage Dortmund, I'd appreciate if you could drop a like in the video. Let's shoot for 7k likes. I know you guys can do it, boys. Let's make it up and subscribe as well for daily FIFA 22 career mode content and let's begin. Rules wise, this is what we're working with. Winning the Champions League is the goal. We can only sign players that are either 84 rated or below that. We got to sim every single game. We can play that Champions League final and also Erling Haaland is gone. I've already like removed Haaland from the first team here just so that we get to know what we're working with and yeah, it's sad he's leaving but the amount of money we can get for him I reckon will help take this team to the next level. Already I have the replacement for Haaland. That's the crazy part. Daniel Malen will make him our next Haaland. Also Sancho left so we I think need a replacement in that department too so a right winger is what we're looking for as well i'm happy with that midfield for the first season defense probably a right back that entire right side needs a bit of reinvention you could say we can't sign players above the overall of 85 so we got to be smart about everything we do but i like the first team we're working with we've got a lot of young players as well on the bench but yeah, this squad needs a lot of improvement and that cash we'll get from Holland will, I think, be clutch because right now we've only got about 63 million to work with. So this is going to be super interesting. This is interesting. Madrid have come in with a 47.8 million transfer offer for a 32-year-old Mats Hummels. I think we can even get more money for him. If we can, I'm definitely interested because he's 32. Going to counter with 60 million if they're going to pay me that. Nah, they aren't. Madrid aren't dumb. Real Madrid aren't a stupid club. They know who they want and they know that what they're willing to pay. We'll counter with 55. Well, to be fair, 55 million for a 32-year-old Hummels. I'll absolutely take it. I looked at the club and we've got so many cams already. We can afford letting Julian Brandt go and for 40 million, maybe even a little more. I'm going to negotiate and try and get this up a bit. What are they going to say about 50 million for Julian Brandt? That seems like a lot of money. Are they going to accept that? Nah, they aren't. Klopp knows what he's doing. We'll counter with, let's say, 45 million. I think that's a good counter offer. Is Klopp gonna accept that he is? We'll take the 45 milli for Julian Brandt. More money to maybe sign a top class right winger, which I really want to do. This has got to be the first time I've signed Pedro Goncalves. 78 million. I got the money to do this because of the fact that we sold Hummels and Julian Brandt. So that's brilliant. We signed him for a hefty price, but he's under the overall of 84. Great stats, only 23. I think he's the kind of signing Borussia Dortmund often makes. So him on that right side, perfect. And guys, it's happened. Erling Haaland has been sold. And I'm not surprised the club we've sold him to. It's Manchester City. 189.9 million for Haaland. We get another 170 million. So even after spending big on Pedro Goncalves, we've got cash to improve the team even further. About 244 million. Let's put this to good use. We need a center back probably. Maybe even a left winger. There's so much left to do. Another top class signing. It's Tap Soba from Leverkusen. In Germany, clubs do tend to sign players from other clubs. It's accepted. Tap Soba's from Leverkusen for 65.6 million. We've signed him here at Dortmund. He's 81 rated loads of potential him Zagadu and the other center backs we've got at the club namely of course Akanji all of them I think top class options to have so very happy with that signing 
Signing another player from a fellow German club at Inzabi Leipzig's Nordi Mukiel. Oh boy, that's a good one. I really think he's going to help us out massively. We signed him for about 32 million plus Thomas Munir in a swap deal. Perfect opportunity to get rid of him. Mukiel is again 81 rated. I think every player we've signed is 81 rated so far. 23 years old. Really can't go wrong with a signing as good as this, man. Honestly, we'll put a development plan on him. Probably like attacking wide back suits him the most because we'll get his, you know, attacking stats up a bit because defending wise, he's such a baller already. Top class signing again. Taking a small break from all the transfer stuff, we've got the German Super Cup against Bayern. I'm not expecting a win, especially with all the departures we've had, but you just never know. German Super Cup, fair play. Bayern Munich have beaten us, so yeah, getting the better of Bayern in this challenge is going to be so difficult, especially in the Bundesliga. Over a 34-game season, that's going to be such a monumental task. Another signing I've made is Noah Lang from club Bruges. I remember him against PSG. He literally felt like the second coming of Neymar. Like Neymar was playing in that game, but he was he was better. Noah Lang, 22, 79 rated. I reckon he's going to be epic for us in this challenge. And that's why I've signed him. A player I never usually signed, so I quite like this. Guys, even though we've got money left, I kind of want to just run with this team. I think the overalls are perfectly fine. We've got a lot of squad depth as well in every position, basically. I like this, guys. I absolutely absolutely do and even though we've got 100 milli left in the bank to spend we'll keep that maybe for january where we can improve the team even more for now want to rock this and just see what we can achieve i think i'm done with transfers for season one right now not season one but basically the summer transfer window because i like the look of this team i don't really want to change much more i think there's squad depth as well and i just want to see how we perform now we have got about 100 milli left i guess we'll probably use that in january after seeing how we're performing i think that's very smart so that's what we're going gonna do we're gonna sim on till january and just see where this borussia dortmund team is with player growth i reckon this team with so many talents that it's got could be epic all right halfway through the season i think nobody's surprised with bayern leading the bundesliga seven points clear of us but i don't like the fat lives you got above us but that's only two points I reckon with maybe a good trans window in January, we can change that. But yeah, third in the Bundesliga, halfway through the season. We get the job done in our Champions League group, already doing better than what Dortmund did in real life. And we've made it to the round of 16, where we'll be up against Liverpool. I can't believe it. Oh boy, our Champions League journey could just come to an end right here, right now. That is, that is such a bummer. Liverpool. Oh, look at the player growth. Marlen up to an 81, Goncalves up to an 84. Mukiel up to an 83. Player growth has been very, very kind to us. Noah Lang already up to an 80. That's brilliant, boys. I'm thinking in this window, we got to sign maybe another midfielder. I'm really tempted to just letting Witzel leave. Anyways, contracts expiring and bringing in a top class midfielder too to partner Bellingham in the future. That's the play. We've got 100 milli. We can maybe do that as well as some other stuff too. So it's going to be an interesting window. In a challenge like this, where we really aren't allowed to make the signings we normally would in terms of high rated players, I kind of want to go with players I know that are just insane in these fixing challenges. Carlos Soler, for some reason, is just ridiculous with stats on these fixing videos. His overall goes up to 90 plus. I think it makes sense for us to sign him. Plus, I feel like he's a kind of a Dortmund player. Plus, He's available for about 55 million. If we can get him for that, that is absolutely a signing we got to make. No two ways about it. Let's see if this works. Yup, for 55 million, I'm not saying no to Carlos Soler. Absolutely not. There you go, guys. Carlos Soler has been signed for a very good price of just 54 million. 83 rated. He's going to be epic for us in that midfield. Lovely signing, in my opinion. Another signing I'm going to complete is... Ah, oh, I can't. I can't do this. Pongracic. I wanted to make him a permanent player because... He's growing well, a great backup option. I guess next season we can try and sign him. With Soler, I think I'm done with my transfers for this season. We're just going to run with this squad. Hopefully we can do well in the Champions League and of course Bundesliga. 
We've got money left, but I just don't know what to do with it. I'm happy with the team we've got. Playground's growing, uh, going well. Let's him until the end and see what's up. All right, guys. First leg, Champions League round of 16. I'm not that hopeful against Liverpool at Anfield, but let's just see what happens, yeah? Klopp against this former team, by the way, and yeah. It's gonna take us a while until we build a Champions League winning team. And well, first leg itself, we've been humbled. Here we go, guys. Second leg, Borussia Dortmund versus Liverpool. We lost 2-0 in the first leg. Not much hope. 4-0 in the second. Oh my god. It's gonna take us a while to get Dortmund back to the top if this is what we do in the Champions League. Horrendous. Here's the end of the Bundesliga season and it's kind of embarrassing. We could only finish third, way off Bayern, but we couldn't even finish second. End of the first season, this challenge is a lot more difficult than I expected. No Haaland, the goals have reduced, although defensively we're on the same level as everyone else, but my god, finishing third behind even RB Leipzig? Didn't expect that. This was pretty bad. Third in our first season, just embarrassing. What about the DFB Pokal? It's going to be a final between Bayern and Leipzig. Leipzig. We got knocked out on penalties in the semis. That's a real bummer. First season was fairly disappointing, I'd say. Guys, we could genuinely, we could genuinely get sacked at this point. 40 is our confidence rating. I'm hoping we survive the season. I don't like this. At least something went in our favor. That's Pedro Goncalves had a ridiculously good season. He's up to an 85. That's superb to see. Went up by four ratings. What a season. Royce did okay. Kept his overall as well. Hogan Hazard, that's one player I reckon and we'll need replacing. Marlene did well with growth, so that's amazing. You can only get better from your Emre Chan. Witzel is probably gonna go. Yeah, that's that's it for the stats. We gotta be doing better next season, 100%. I think if we have another disaster class like we had in that first season, this challenge is gonna end with us getting sacked. So we gotta pick the pace up in season two. I think I know what I wanna do. I'm happy with the defense, midfield, probably even the attack for the most part, but I reckon it's time to replace Marco Royce with a cam, who is good enough and with a lot of potential, and also a striker to add a bit of squad depth. That's what I'm looking for this season. Let's get on to those signings. We've got about 150 million, but of course, we can only sign players that are 84 rated and under, so that makes it tricky. First signing I want to make is Lucas Paqueta from Lyon. I think he's a great replacement for, of course, the man himself, Marco Royce. We're going to try and maybe do a swap deal with the two of them. If that works, I think, yeah, that is just absolutely perfect for us. He's worth about 38 million. If we offer 20 million plus Marco Royce, they don't even want Royce. That is a real bummer. And they want 95 million. Oh, God, that is a lot of money. We'll counter it 75.7. They want 90. That's close to his release clause anyways. 80.7. They want 90. Paqueta is expensive, but he's the maximum overall we can get. And I want that kind of a player in the team. The rating matters for me. There you go. 85 million for Paqueta. Top class signing, boys. Lucas Paqueta has been signed by Dortmund. And that does mean we're going to let Marco Royce leave. We've put him on the transfer list. Contracts expiring on him. Let's see what happens. Guys, I'm going to be making a very, very interesting transfer. I just realized, instead of signing a youngster for backup for Malen, why not bring back Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, whose overall is dipped to 84. He'll give us a good rating for squad depth, versatile, plus a bit of an emotional signing. Former Dortmund player did really well here. Let's bring him back and we can get him for like 25, 30 million. We can afford that. So yeah, Aubameyang's been signed for 27 million. In other news, we're also going to be selling... Marco Royce to I think Real Madrid that deal is going through as well because we just signed Paqueta Aubameyang is still useful because well Malen's our only striker Aubameyang can be on the bench or even start and I think that's very helpful for the club yep guys Marco Royce has been sold but I'm looking at my team and even though we've got about 80 million left because of the 84 limit that we've got it's very difficult to make any more signings I think I'm happy with the squad the overalls in our first team is pretty insane we're just gonna keep it as is and get through the season. Let's get on till January and see where we're at. Even our bench is now pretty insane. I'm expecting a lot better of a season this time around. Although we're fourth in Bundesliga, this is actually better than last season. I think we're in a title fight. Leipzig are just top of the league right now, which is, yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, we're, we're, we're just one point off Wolfsburg and Bayern. So still, we're in it, I guess. You could say that we're in it. Yeah, but okay, I don't know if it's better than last season or not. Maybe it is, but we're in the top four. That's what matters. 
What about the Champions League, though? What about the Champions League? We topped our group with PSG in it. That's given me a lot of confidence. Round of 16, Marseille. We could do something special this season in the Champions League. You just never know. Because the ratings at our players are looking good. Why is our midfield on, like, downward morale? I just don't get it. Emre Chan, I think, maybe should be a starter now at this point. Because I don't know what Soler is doing. We'll put him on the bench. But, yeah, the overalls in our players are skyrocketing. Goncalves has just been a ridiculous transfer. Malen is slowly growing. I think Aubameyang has done a decent job. I don't think we're making any more signings because I'm happy with the team right now. I know we've got 92 million. I want to keep it as is. The thing is, we can't improve the team any further. You look at the overalls, everyone's like 84 to 85 rated and we cannot sign players above that overall. So it all depends on player growth for us to win more. So we're going to sim until the end of the season and see what's up. All right, Champions League begins and we're up against Olympique Marseille. For some reason, Bellingham's got a minus three on his overall. I don't get it, but we're still going to use this team. I love the ratings on this side. And if we get lucky, I wouldn't be surprised if we get to the Champions League final. But it all depends on the draw. First obstacle is Marseille. We need a strong result. First leg away from home. And it's only a draw. And here I was thinking about getting to the final this season. Not going to be easy. Why is Bellingham getting a minus four on his overall? He's unhappy for some reason. I just don't get it. I really don't. We'll play Carlos Soler, I guess, instead of him. Because his overall's a lot higher. And let's hope that is enough to get through this one. And it is. At least we make it to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. A step better than last season. Let's go. Okay, yeah, we're not winning the Champions League this season, guys. We've drawn PSG. Literally the draw we need to avoid. That's happened, it's over. We're not winning the Champions League. It's it's not happening this season, at least. If we could get even a draw from this, I reckon that would be absolutely incredible. Like, yeah, a draw for the first leg would just be phenomenal. It's a 2-1 defeat. Not gonna lie, guys. I don't really have much hope for the second leg. We lost 2-1 in the first one. We'll need something spectacular to go through. It's not gonna happen when you're up against PSG. You draw against PSG early on. It's basically such a hard job. There's going to be a season three. Another season that was pretty sad, I'd say. Nowhere near Bayern Munich. Like, I don't know what we did in the second half of the season. Two seasons in and this Dortmund fixing challenge. I feel like we're going nowhere. We're running around in circles. We'll need to do a lot better in season three. And the fact that we can't make those superstar signings is really frustrating. But that's the challenge. Goncalves again stepped up big time. Marlen had a good season in terms of growth. Hogan Hazard is proving to being an important player and I want to keep him in the side because he's 86 rated. Anyone we sign next, it'll be a downgrade because he'll be 84. Emre Chan did okay. Aubameyang went down a fair bit so we'll try and replace him in the next season but first team, player ratings are superb. Stats were looking all right as well. I genuinely feel this team should be doing better in all competitions. Let's hope season three will be. All right guys, season three begins and I look at this team and I just keep wondering why aren't we doing better? We've got squad depth in almost every position. The overalls in our players are pretty crazy as well. I just don't get why we're not doing better. Maybe putting Carlos Soler for Emre Chan will certainly help. Not Paqueta. We'll put Paqueta back in. But yeah, season three has got to be better. We've got to be pushing for Bundesliga, man. Budget is of no issue right now. Bigger issue is our confidence rating. It's down to 42. In terms of signings, no signing that we make is going to impact the first team because of how player growth works. I reckon I kind of want a backup right winger to have on the bench. I think that's smart. But that's about it really I want to do. I feel like this team is good enough. If we avoid PSG, I reckon we can get to a Champions League final. So let's get that right winger signing done. And I think I know who I want. It's Hakim Ziyech. He's 30. He'll retain his overall for a while. And in real life, apparently, he's been linked to Borussia Dortmund. So why not? All right, with Hakim Ziyech on the bench, I feel like we've got every position covered. Squad depth is there. Ah, oh, we might need another keeper. Well, completely forgot that we don't have a backup keeper. That's something we need to do. I don't even mind signing Berkey again. Because why not? Or... Should we try and sign another 84 rated keeper and give Cobell a bit of competition? That might be smart. Let's see. Oh, Berkey's just become a free agent. I'll just sign Berkey back again, guys, because I just realized if we sign a similar keeper to the one we have right now, he's going to get less game time. Both keepers are going to get less game time and they won't grow as much. So I guess it's smart to just have Berkey as like a backup option because why not? He's already been in the club. We'll just sign him for that. Perfect. Didn't even have to pay a signing bonus. There you go, backup keeper signed. I think the squad's complete. I'm really hoping player growth starts kicking in in all our players. 
because I think with that, we should be able to do a lot better. Need Cobell to grow well, need Marlen, Paqueta, Bellingham and all to really start skyrocketing in their overall. That's going to be the team. We've again improved squad depth. Let's see how we fare this season. Guys, I think I've concluded it's impossible to win the Bundesliga. Bayern are literally an unstoppable force. I thought we were doing well this season. We're still two points off Leipzig and we're what? Nine points off Bayern. It's virtually impossible to get the better of them. This is unreal. Like, fair enough, Bayern. I guess. Well, hopefully in the Champions League, at least we haven't messed up. We've managed to top our group unbeaten in the Champions League and we've drawn Real Madrid. Oh my god, I could be here for so long trying to win the Champions League. Is that going to even be possible? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I don't think I'm making any more signings for the first team. Player growth has certainly not kicked in on our midfielders and I don't like it, man. I don't know why. At least Gon Calves is growing massively. We'll give him that. Anyways, we're just going to fire through until we get through all the Champions League games. Could this be the season we win the Champions League? We'll have to just wait and watch. Here we go. Borussia Dortmund up against Real Madrid. We're playing them away from home. Hogan Hazard, 89 rated. I love the fact that he's 89 and Hazard should be 89 as well, but isn't even in the Real Madrid team. Interesting. But yeah, we got knocked out last season to, of course, PSG. This season, it's Madrid we're playing. I'm kind of scared. Let's see what happens here. First leg, if we can get a good result in the first leg we can Daniel Malen with the goal maybe this is the season prefer really not to um, not to speak first leg brilliantly done we won one nil we've got the advantage we're playing at home let's wrap this one up in the second leg and have we gone through or not 5-4 on the pitch but 4-3 on penalties we go through. What on earth has just happened here? Soler equalizing for us in the 117th minute. Benzema scoring. This might be the most ridiculous simulation game I have ever seen. What even? But we actually go through. I was genuinely confused whether we've gone through or not. But I think we have. Oh my god was that insane. I don't really like our luck in this competition man. Now Atletico Madrid. That's going to be tough as well. But the good thing is PSG Drew City. One of them is going out. That's good news for us. Once again, a strong first leg could mean a lot. Let's do it, boys. A strong first leg is what we need. We get exactly that. Togan Hazard, Malen, and Akanji scoring for us. We should be through to the semis. All right, here we go. Dortmund versus Atletico Madrid. 3-1 from the first leg. Shouldn't be much of a problem, I reckon. Unlike the... Yeah, yeah, we get a two-all draw. That's enough. We're going through to the semis. Yes, guys, this is literally perfect. We've drawn Napoli in the Champions League semifinals. We avoid PSG. We avoid Bayern. That's what we needed. What a relief. The luck is with us this season. We got a... Wait, 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 what? Both Thog Nazar and Paqueta injured. Maybe the luck isn't with us. For how long? Thorgan Hazard's out for three months. Paqueta is at least out for just six days. But even Reyna's injured. Are we, are we dealing with an injury crisis here? Oh my god. That might make things incredibly difficult against Napoli. Well, guest signing Hakim Ziyech has come through now with all the injuries. We'll have him at camp. We'll have Noah Lang in that left wing position. We need to get through Napoli. This is a golden chance. Oh, only a draw. First leg, 1-1. One, one. Second leg, guys. 1-1 one, one from the first leg. Paqueta is back. That's even better. Let's do this, boys. At home. We gotta do it. And we do it. Paqueta ends up scoring to win in a Champions League final with Dortmund. Let's go. It's only taken us three seasons, but we're here. And of course, it's PSG we're facing in the Champions League final. Oh my god. Also, what's happened in the league? We'll take a look at that soon. But we've got a cup final against Gladbach. Let's see if we can win the cup. I'm gonna have Noah Lang play in that left wing position in the absence of, of course, Torgan Hazard. Can we win a trophy? Can we win the German Cup? Yes, we can. A 106 minute winner from Malen. What a performance. Let's go. Very curious to see what's happened in the Bundesliga. What? How did we win the league? Did Bayern Munich forgot how to play football in these last six months? We've actually won the Bundesliga. What was an impossible challenge? We've done it. I don't know how because we were third. Nine points off Bayern halfway through the season. This is incredible. I'll take it, guys. I'll absolutely take it to be 
beat Bayern to the Bundesliga is incredible. And we beat Leipzig as well. So in our third season, we're on course for the treble. Unreal. Champions League final up next against PSG. I am very curious to see who were the stars this season. So, Malen. I can't wait to try him out in-game because I'm sure he's going to be insane. Such a shame Thorgan Hazard picked up an injury because he's been great. Goncalves as well. Look at Soler. I'm telling you, in FIFA, this man produces incredible stats always. Paqueta did well. Bellingham too. Love it, guys. Absolutely love it. Who do I start instead of Thorgan Hazard in the final? I think it's got to be Noah Lang. Hakim Ziyech is a good option too, but it's got to be Noah Lang. So that's what we're doing in the Champions League final. That's going to be our team. No Messi or Mbappe for them. That's good news for us. I reckon we've got a squad capable of beating them. Finals at San Siro. Let's complete the challenge against PSG. Soler. Bellingham. Oh, first chance already against PSG nope. Parqueta. No, I went for the chip. It's Ziyech. No, it's not Ziyech. It's Noah Lang. I'm confused who's even playing at this point. But an early opportunity that was incredible against Dortmund. Instead, now it's Neymar running at us. What is happening in this game so far? Neymar have blocked all shooting angles for the most part. And I can't see defense that. Insane start to this one against PSG. We, we have one hell of a final ahead of us in the Champions League. As I look for Noah Lang doesn't work. But my God. Is this looking like it's going to be an insane game? Could be the first time I lose a final in one of these fixing videos because PSG are brilliant. Oh, they've got a chance here with Mauro Icardi going for goal. Talk about losing potentially. And that could be one of the reasons. Mauro Icardi has just put that one right in the top left corner. Nothing much I could do then. Really nothing much. Mauro Icardi strikes. It's 1-0. PSG get the lead. Oh boy. Wait a minute, guys. Is that Noah Lang? No, it's Hakim Ziyech. EA, EA, EA. EA on its own, pretty sure, decided to play Hakim Ziyech instead of Noah Lang. I swear, EA, why do you do this? I make decisions because I think they're the better ones. Instead, the game just decides on its own who it wants to play. No wonder I thought it was Ziyech with that attempt there. It was him. Oh my god, that is so frustrating. Oh, that's a bad one. But Malen taking advantage of it. Chance here. Come on, we could have maybe gotten ourselves a free kick instead. Instead, Paqueta's injured too. Yo, what's happening in this game? Bellingham. Cleverly down to find Paqueta who's turned this man. Still Paqueta. Can he get the shot off? Took too much time. Maybe it's the injury, but we're looking good in this game. Just need to get that equalizer before the first half. Why are my players tumbling all on their own on the floor? You know what? I want to see how he fell. I swear FIFA amazes me every single time. Like, what on earth is this? Look at this. Look at this. What is this video game, man? What is this video game? Oh, Nordi Mukiel looking to go all the way. Looks for the pass for Malen. Nope. He's offside. He's offside. That was offside by a mile as Marquinhos gets booked. Paqueta. Smart ball for Goncalves. Let's see what he's all about. Looks to bring it inside. The pass is there. Paqueta. Nope. Come on. How ah, PSG defend like this, even in real life, man, with all the blocking and everything. There's Mukiel. Come on, let's see what we can do here. Inside for Jude Bellingham. Daniel Malen. Bellingham. Can't control that one. It's going to be a real struggle to get a goal back. That's a lovely ball for Paqueta. Could this be the moment? Paqueta, no! Bruh, I would have scored that. What? How did he miss that? That's... Oh, my days. That was horrendous. Honestly, guys, I can't believe we're losing this game and Pedro Goncalves just runs out of the pitch like that. Oh, my God. What are we doing here? Like, what are we doing here? Ziyech. That's a smart ball for Paqueta. And I see Ziyech making a run. Controversial that he might have a chance to score. He's going off, guys. I'm sorry. This man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. I, I need Noah Lang. I want to try him out anyways. Good Lord, was that bad from Ziyech. Mukiel. That's a good ball for Malen. If he controls it, he can. Oh, what a goal from Daniel Malen. We get the equalizer against PSG. That was simply sensational from Malen. Give him all the credit in the world because the ball from Mukiel was class. But the way Malen got it under control was just something about that. Like a top-class striker's finish, that was. There you go. Look at that ball with the touch. Lovely finish. Superb stuff. We get a deserved equalizer against PSG. Ziyech is coming off as well. 52nd minute, 1-1. One, we can win this. We really can. Now Alang. Good pass for Rafael Guerrero. I can drive this one in. Come on. That was a guaranteed goal. 
Missed opportunity again. Oh, that's a good ball for Malin again. Oh, what a finish from Daniel Malin. He is special. Daniel Malin is a special striker on FIFA 20, do like. So, so good. Both finishes had just something about them. Absolutely incredible from Daniel Malin. And, yep, we're leading, of course. 2-1 against PSG, deservedly so as well. Look at that for a finish. Oh, the way he took that, just beautiful. W which minute? 62nd minute. We've turned the game around. A Malen brace, we're leading. I reckon we can beat PSG. We're looking so much better than them. Paqueta. Now looks for Jude Bellingham. We could end this game here. But Malen controls it. How on earth hasn't he scored that? Oh my god. We're just giving PSG that opportunity to get another goal. And I'm not liking this as they've got space here. We're trying to block off any shooting opportunity. Akanji, monstrous defending that. Oh, 75th minute of the game. We just got to hang on for like 15 and we're done. We're going to win the challenge. The fact that we've done this without signing a single player above 84 will be insane. But let's not count our chickens just yet. It's only the 78th minute of the game. Problems here for us. Big problems. Danilo Pereira looks for that pass. Naughty Mukiel has had such a big game. That was another big moment as Noah Lang gets taken out there. But... It's only going to give us more time to just be composed, move the ball around smartly, get the job done. Exactly. Okay, there are no passing options for us right now. Tapsoba will need to figure out something to do. And he's done that brilliantly. And now passing options are there. Naughty Mukiel is available. Going to go for Jude Bellingham. Looking for that pass for Goncalves, who has kept himself on here. Pedro Goncalves looking inside. Finesse shot. Oh my god, off the crossbar. That would have been one hell of a way to end the game. Guerrero with a chance. Right foot saved by Donnarumma. And it's done, boys. It's done. We've just won the Champions League with Dortmund with all the challenges we set, selling Haaland. And we've done it in three seasons. Yep, we got a bit of luck with the simulations in our third season. But you know what? You create your own luck, I guess. So loved this video guys i think going forward we're going to start doing fixing challenges with a lot more stipulations and all that and just spice things up i loved making this video for you guys and if you enjoyed it as well i'd appreciate it if you could drop a like because this was a bit of a grind but we got it done enjoy the trophy celebrations guys but this is where i'll be leaving you all where this was a super fun fixing friday to record man with dortmund with all the champions league mishaps they've had in real life to win them the champions league was fun and we signed a lot of different players with all the stipulations really enjoyed it if you guys as well did drop a like subscribe to new round here and well i'll catch you guys for the next one peace